Good morning, uh, good afternoon, good evening, ladies and uh, gentlemen. I'm very happy to present our work today uh, on food safety research and training in informal or wet markets in Southeast Asia. Uh, I am Hong Nguyen from International Livestock Research Institute, presenting on behalf of the group of our colleagues. You can see here their name on the first slide. And actually, um, we work for the International Livestock Research Institute, one of the 15 centers of the CGIR on international agricultural research. So we work to improve the uh, food security, reduct, reduce poverty and improve natural resource um, and ecosystem services and uh, contributing to the SDG. Uh, today I talked about food safety in informal market. So some background on why we work on, on this area. Uh, recently, there was a report of WHO showing that food safety is a public health concern because it goes uh, to 33 million dollars loss per year, uh, comparable to uh, three major diseases, HIV, AIDS, uh, TB, tuberculosis, and malaria. So you see the, from public health point of view, that is uh, important. But more importantly, uh, this burden of football disease are mainly uh, in developing countries. If you look at Asia and Africa, it represents mainly the burden of that areas. And actually most of this uh, burden of disease are caused by the so-called uh, microbials, uh, you know, virus, bacteria, parasite, and very much less from uh, chemicals. Uh, at least at the uh, evidence that we have until now. And also from economic uh, impact point of view, this foodborne disease uh, uh, caused uh, a loss of about 115 billion US dollar uh, as in uh, 2016. And you can see here, most of the uh, loss in economy is uh, mainly from productivity loss and trade. Um, so when we work on the food safety in informal market. Just give you an idea about the general pictures that we saw in many developing countries here in the case of Vietnam, looking at the pork value chain, you can see that most of the pork are produced at uh, the small scale uh, uh, livestock systems. And actually the slaughterhouses uh, are operating in a rather uh, poor hygienic condition. Uh, and uh, at the market level, uh, the wet market or the so-called informal market, a lack of kind of an infrastructure and the hygienic condition and very often is uh, cause uh, concerns in terms of food safety. So in this context of informal market, is, it represents some risks in terms of health that play a very important uh, Role for most of people in developing countries because that uh, given easy access and very approachable way uh, for people to, to have food. So that is uh, uh, important areas. And our question is in fact, you know, how to improve the food safety in such areas from a research point of view. And here we came up uh, for our last almost 20 years of research at INRI and partners uh, with an approach uh, to work on food safety. And uh, first, we try to analyze this current situation of food safety. We try to build up the capacity in applying the risk-based approach in uh, some of the countries. We came up with the proof of concept, mainly relying on the participatory risk assessment and of course, piloting the intervention in different contexts. So the, the framework of risk analysis is key for, for our work here, but really adapted to the context of uh, developing world. Also the theory of change uh, help us to identify the key partners and key actors who play crucial role in, in improving food safety. Here, for example, the case of Cambodia, we identify different value chain actors and also policy makers uh, to engage them in the process of research and intervention to improve food safety. Uh, here, for example, in the case of Vietnam, uh, the risk-based approach was applied to analyze the risk 
uh, along the fork value chain. So uh, you can see here the process uh, sampling uh, from farm to fork, but also running different models to come up with the risk uh, uh, for the population. Uh, for example, here, overally, about 17% of the population uh, would have salmonella salmonellosis uh, by eating pork that was contaminated with salmonella in informal market in Vietnam. Uh, that is important risk because that a lot of people among 93 million people uh, would get sick because of, of that problem. And we quantify also the economic loss linked to the treatment of football diarrhea case in Vietnam. It costs about 100 and seven US dollars to treat such a case, including direct and indirect costs uh, um, uh, in, in hospital and also indirect costs because people cannot work during the sickness, et cetera, et cetera. And if you uh, know the number of people uh, who are sick because of the football diseases, you can have an idea as to how much money uh, the government and the population in general would lose because of that food safety problem. Or oh, here, for example, another example, we uh, work on uh, a project called Safe Food, Fair Food in Cambodia. This is an ongoing project where we try to identify the contamination of different value chains. Um, we see, you know, that is not surprising, a quite high level of contamination of salmonella and staphylococcus aureus in chicken and pork in informal market, but also uh, identify the cost uh, of football area in uh, in Cambodia is which costs about 63 US dollars per case. And when you have all this information about the burden of disease, the contamination level, we try to come up with some simple uh, intervention measure to improve this uh, food safety issue in developing countries. And here's an example from Vietnam. We targeted actually uh, the intervention at slaughterhouse level, like you can see on the left-hand side, but also in the market, uh, traditional market, to improve uh, the, the hygienic conditions uh, in, in the market by training people. So the training is key because we need to improve the knowledge and the practices of these uh, value chain actors uh, in, in slaughterhouse and also in the retail uh, market level. Uh, by introducing simple measures. For example, here at the slaughterhouse level, uh, we try to introduce a simple uh, improvement of uh, equipment. Uh, for example, providing uh, different uh, metal grid to separate the carcass from the floor because the floor was kind of unhygienic and also, you know, uh, train people to use this in a correct way but more importantly, engage them and you know, uh, understand uh, what they want uh, because this simple uh, modification of the system might help them to improve the, the hygiene uh, condition in, in slaughterhouse in the context of Vietnam. Uh, so the results show quite promising because we could reduce the level of uh, microbial contamination in the carcass before that is moved to the market. Here is the market level. We are, we have been doing similar approach uh, between Vietnam and Cambodia by training uh, retailers at, mark, at the market and uh, provide them a simple equipment uh, to improve the, the hygiene uh, hygienic condition. Uh, for example, here you can see um, how to separate uh, meat with cooked food or different uh, organs uh, in, in, in the shop, but also how to uh, secure certain simple materials that is the cleaning of the shop. And so, so you can see that they now um, a small investment of about 20 to $25 per shop might lead to some improvement of the hygiene condition. And to do that, we work uh, closely with the local uh, vet in different provinces also with market managers and mainly uh, different retailers from the training level into the application uh, of, uh, of, the, of the approach. And here, for example, the result can show that, show that you know, 
we uh, this intervention of about 20 or 25 dollars per shop could bring the level of total bacterial count uh, uh, down to about uh, 0 0.7 look uh, after the intervention has been introduced. Uh, so that is uh, actually uh, quite interesting uh, result we have. Another area we, we, we work is uh, about capacity binding. So you see, uh, the training, of course, we did the training with uh, different uh, value chain actors, uh, food safety, uh, like previously described, but we also target the next generation of food safety workers in, in different countries. For example, here, we work with uh, a researcher, with uh, young uh, students uh, and researcher uh, to train them the risk-based approach, risk-based approach for food safety, but also we work with the uh, professional uh, uh, for example, the local vet uh, 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 at the provincial level in uh, inspecting uh, food uh, and you know, doing research in the fin. Uh, so that I think that is an important area to, to improve. And from a, a long-term point of view, we also work with university, universities and, and the ministries, for example, here we develop the curriculum of food safety training that have been used in different universities in Vietnam, for example. Um, and actually, uh, some of the training also uh, was uh, conducted for the local uh, professional, like a provincial vet um, or public health people at the provincial, uh, at a provincial level in, in Vietnam and in Cambodia. Uh, so some of the research uh, evidence uh, have been also used to influence the policy or uh, to actually inform the development of projects uh, to improve food safety in these countries. Uh, the approach we have been using is in fact, we uh, work with, uh, we form actually the so-called food safety risk assessment task force uh, where uh, we could work with different people from universities research institute, but also from government level, so that this group can identify the issues in the country and try to come up with some proposal and use available uh, research evidence in food safety to uh, advise, to inform the government. And uh, we could develop uh, some important report with uh, donors and, and other development organization to uh, work with the government to come up with, with the country uh, come up with some project development in Vietnam and the ongoing work in Cambodia uh, is also using the same approach and hopefully this uh, result from the project can inform uh, this kind of activities in, in different countries. Okay, so I hope that I could uh, provide some information for you uh, on the context of food safety in wet market and informal market and the key message um, we would uh, take home is actually the food safety in informal or wet market. Um, we observe the high level of microbial contamination along the value chains, and that's actually of the uh, public health uh, concern. Uh, however, the high level of contamination does uh, uh, automatically lead to a very serious risk. That's why the risk-based approach make the clear difference between hazards and risks, help identify the targeted interventions and key stakeholders to improve food safety. So that is something uh, important in, in this um, approach. Uh, we also realize that the capacity building and training uh, to different uh, actors along the value chain of food safety um, is also important. And this training need to be adapted with uh, some interventions that uh, you know, locally acceptable and, and socially acceptable. For example, our example in, uh, in the slaughterhouse and in the, in the wet market. And also from uh, engagement and policy influence, um, we targeted really some of the important actors like local vet in different uh, provinces who facilitated very much the intervention and the application of the uh, uh, new technology, it's a simple technology, low cost technology to improve food safety and working also with uh, uh, different uh, stakeholders at the policy level 
to use some of this result for uh, improving the food safety at different level uh, in the context we are working. So with that, I would like to thank you very much for your attention. And uh, I would like to thank also uh, different people in our team at INRI, but also in uh, some country we work in Cambodia, in Vietnam, and different uh, donors who uh, have funded uh, our work uh, to make this happen. Thank you very much.